There he is. Oh. Oh, oh shit. not a no. good idea. Oh, I died. <laughs> you literally hit. I didn't mean to. I was aiming. I, I thought I was hitting his leg. Well, that leg. was smart. Go ahead. Blow up. Blow the, up. These are RNG. When you've it's had, happened so you've much. Had so many. Ah! Capybaras. Big old guinea pigs. They cute. They super cool. And <laughs> according to uh, according to uh, you know a lot of people out there, pound for pound, the most awesome animal in the world. <laughs> like, I, you're not gonna hear me disagree. I mean, giant guinea pigs that are actually really friendly. Hell yes. That's that's the best shit ever. So the funniest thing to me is the fact that they'll chill with things that should be having them for an afternoon snack. Yes. Like crocodiles and stuff. Yeah, and they're just chilling there's like stuff, homie. It's like, you know so I could eat you right. Lay it on the back of a crocodile and the crocodile's just like okay. <laughs> yeah, he's like he's just like, I'm just chilling back here. He's like, you know I can eat you, right? It's just like, yeah, I know. I just don't care. It's like, yeah, but is it really worth the effort? And he's just like, I was on the crocs, just like, respect, respect. I mean, think about it. First, you're going to have to get me off your back. But if you just keep sitting here and chilling with me, eventually something stupid is going to come along right in front of you. And you won't even have to turn around to get a hold of it. You make a fair point. <laughs> it's like the kind of conversation I imagine it having with the crocodile. Just animals talk to each other. Yeah, and honestly... I'm not okay. Casual Geographic doesn't really ruin animals for me, but he does bring up some interesting points about them where I'm just like, eh, I'm probably going to keep my distance from them in real life if I ever see them. But I don't think he's going to really do that about capybaras. But I guess we're going to see. Uh, I guess we're going to see what. Uh, it's like he makes it really hard to ma to maintain like what I've always considered myself as with someone who likes all animals. Like, he makes it difficult. <laughs> yes. But... So oh. Obviously, like, even sharks. I'm like, I don't want bad things to happen to sharks. I just don't want to be anywhere near them, and I don't want to look at them. And that's fair. Like, people who cut sharks' fins off and throw them back in the waters are pieces of shit. Yeah. I'm terrified of the sharks, but, like, no. Don't do that to sharks. That's fucked up. Anyway. Got this queued up here. See what, uh, Nash let's see what, uh, Casual Geographic's got to say. Here we go. Ah. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I made this joke already. How you doing? Fantastic. I hope you have a good day. Hope you have a better week. I hope your month is full of successful days and a lot of great ventures. I hope you just come up, brother. You smell great. You smell great. <laughs> hey. Oh. This I'm is not the seeing way many baby capybaras. Oh, the I'm so cute. One of the most memeable animals to be added to Earth's roster. Almost entirely for their sheer positivity. And it's not like that fake positivity from animals like dolphins or performing yeah. activists oh. on TikTok. Capybaras are legitimately unproblematic, almost too much for their own good. The thing is, they have no reason to be like this. In fact, they have every excuse to be the exact 180. But first, <laughs> let's talk about what this aquatic stress ball is. It's a rodent, and pretty much a plus size guinea pig since that's their closest relative, even though they're like 60 times heavier. Also, guinea pigs are one of the few mammals that can get folded by deep water since they can't swim, which is something cappies know nothing about since half their personality stays in the water with them. Just like their cousins, the Nutria, which is basically just a beaver you've never heard of. And the Pacarana, who's probably most famous for getting abused with soap like a banned Old Spice ad. But out of all rodents... <laughs> yeah, that rat washing itself, I was just like, well, damn. Capybara are the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. And considering how people... It feel looks like they have longer legs smaller, for swimming. You would think the Capybara would be the most... You look hate. at a guinea pig, and like, they're like this, you know. Like, all they got is hands. They don't got any arms to paddle with. Yeah. At least Capybara's got, like, some... Proper yeah. paddling arms. Yeah, some proper paddling with. Yeah. Appendages. The oxygen sink on the planet. But the only thing more ironic than the fact that it's the complete <laughs> opposite is the fact that this chunky chinchilla is so chill since history shows they should really be the polar opposite. Usually when something's this unbothered, it's because they've never felt yeah. any kind of pressure from predators. It's why the quokkas on Rottnest Island have no fear of humans since they have no Yay. natural predators. Capybara, on the other hand, have more ops than a rapper with a Rico charge. These giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by the biggest big cat in North America, a discount store brand crocodile, and a paraplegic Jurassic under 
understudy. Their childhood mm. isn't any easier, because juveniles can get caught up with ocelots, a paralysis demon with wings, and technically pelicans don't count, but it's not for a lack of trying. <laughs> I love the fact they include the Yoshi sound, yeah. and he's just like, he's like, oh, 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 oh. damn it. He's like trying so he's hard like, and he fails. Is this edible? No, it won't fit. Oh, oh. I know my mouth is big, but it's too big for my mouth. Yes. And normally an animal that has to share an area code with this many threats to its way of life compensates by becoming a problem itself. For example, if zebras had a stripe for everything with the ability to bury them, they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static stallions are an excuse like they get tax breaks yeah. from it. Every time I see that clip, and we all know it's like, yeah. It's like, he's just like, motherfucker, you getting too close? Like, man, I'm just chilling. Motherfucker, you getting too close? Man, don't do nothing. You getting too He's close to stop. That excuse like they get Oh hell no! Let's look how fast it is too. It's just, it just like a little lever that's just like to be more willing to throw down. Predators get. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like the horse kick from freaking 101 Dalmatians. It was like fire one. <laughs> it just reminds me of like a literal bell clapper. It's just like the little things like bong, like <laughs> just like bong right on the top of his head. Yeah. Just, yeah oh. to eat. Prey animals fight to live, but what doesn't make sense is a capybara doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories. It's kind of no. like honey badgers and capybaras are two ends of the nihilism spectrum. You got the four-legged assault Oreo who doesn't value anyone's life, not even its own, and then there's a hippo hamster who can't be physically bothered enough to care. And you would think this mentality would have gotten the cappy written out of the series of life by evolution. No. Or maybe they have the opposite of the kangaroo situation. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly absurd predators the world had ever seen. Stuff like a 23-foot Komodo dragon or the marsupial lion thylacrio. That prehistoric PTSD means that even though kangaroos today have to deal with zero apex land predators, they still act like they're in the trenches. So it's possible <laughs> capybaras had few natural predators coming up, and now they're Helen Keller to all forms of conflict. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. Their ancestors were actually small rodents that evolved from Africa about 80 million years ago. Being small was lit because one, it's a whole lot easier to hide, and number two, eventually you get so small that putting you on a plane isn't worth the energy it would take to catch you. And when their ancestors pulled up to South America 40 million years later, Later, they showed up to an area with few natural predators and plenty of food in the forms of the grasses they like to eat. Scientists now say that it was the lack of predatory pressure that allowed this plus size rabbit pig to grow <laughs> to the size it is today. It that really does look kind of like a hippo a right there where he's all covered in mud. <laughs> yeah, and also seeing come up out of the water and its ears just... <laughs> yeah. It's like hippos do that shit of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In non-AP biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that cappies were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. But of course, nature always catches up, and it wasn't like the capybara was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are. <laughs> Every time I see a manatee, I always imagine its, it's theme song is the following fat people with a tuba theme song. Sort of, except it, except where it's underwater, I guess it'd be. Yeah. <laughs> also, I love the fact that the manatee like sees the croc, or what croc or a gator, I forget. But he sees this and watch his like watch his fin right here. He sees he's like, oh fuck this shit. Nature he's always like, catches up, and it wasn't like the capybara was taking oh, to hell no. danger like that. <laughs> Are. And in a messed up Uno reverse, becoming a literal mighty mouse meant the capybara oh, was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre bulk. So it's pretty much like cappies today have to pay for how good their ancestors had it. Like Gen Z. It's also possible that the capybara oh. isn't as easygoing as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, and each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most food and female validation, which can lead to a lot of infighting in the cappy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always going to be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant alpha male lays more than like any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. The females also get a say in the matter too. Mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs him by nosediving into the nearest body of water, <laughs> where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cappy community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely mm. not like bonobos, who seem oh. to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't explain why capybaras are so chill around animals not even in the same species. 
Oh. Like take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued and sent to live in a refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. And in typical cappy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, sleeping, <laughs> playing, and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned puppies coming hey. to the sanctuary. That's beautiful, man. So cute. It warms my damn heart. Regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise them no, like no, her own no. blood. She would even discipline her <laughs> puppies. Puppy just drank the water that was dripping off of her chin. Yeah. <laughs> Cheesecake was basically a Mother Teresa for terriers and any other orphan pups. Those weren't the only animals she adopted in her time. There's actually a really good reason why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with. And why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Don't look at me, Chuck. Chuck. You get your eyes off me. Please. Something about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. Capybara's the fact that it has giant eyeballs that actually move. Yeah. That's not right. Being called alloparenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group in this kind of ah. like evolving daycare system. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left. He going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, help me over there. Just even theirs. Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> just, just like, just like, hey, bro, why aren't you eating? He's like, I don't need to eat. I just gotta keep staring at the jungle. Uh, I thought of something horrible for why he's not eating right now. Why is that? It's like I went to eat earlier and I thought it was mama, but it wasn't mama. It was daddy, and I put something in my mouth. I fucking no. He's like, I can't, I can't eat this morning now. Oh, Jesus. Just like that, that bit from uh, Kingpin. Uh, Woody Harrelson's pretending to be an Amish guy so he can convince uh, the one Amish dude who's really good at bowling to go with him on a road trip to like win a bowling tournament. And he's just like... He's, he <laughs> he comes from over the hill. He's like, well, I just got done milking the cow. It took a while, but eventually she, she, eventually she put out. It's like, we don't have a cow. We have a bull. And it... And, he tells him that in midst of him taking a drink of the... <laughs> oh, no. I know. It's just oh. as bad as you think. God dang it. <laughs> that, scene, that scene almost made me puke as a kid. Yeah. Let's pray for bro on the left. He going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. The benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP-sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup's chances <laughs> of actually surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother. She was the mother that stepped up. Also, oh, I just want to say that the yeah. same sanctuary would end up getting another capybara named Cobbler, and now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies, and I feel like we should just take some time <laughs> They have to awesome them. names. Yes, best, like, some of the best names. Another thing to appreciate is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole alloparenting thing, but cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's Aww. not the same as having a built-in nursery system in the group. So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in her system is what makes Damn. this He-Man hamster what it is. <laughs> Capybara's got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all because started why in the, the fuck not? Izu Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker said bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. And ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo hamsters to enjoy. <laughs> which is the entire backstory as to... <laughs> that is awesome. I got it. I, I can just see him now. He's just like, I got a tangerine on my head. Life's good. Life's real good how this video exists. And because whatever capybara received, they give back tenfold. These videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of yen in revenue, all from people wanting to see them. Meaning it is scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, hey. that capybaras are good for the economy. If yes. your country's currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw Now I got capybara. something else to put on my list for when I visit Japan. I gotta go see the capybaras. Yeah, the, the capybara hot spring. Yeah, and just be... Visit that zoo. I'll just be... I just I'll just sit there on the edge of the on the edge of the thing, the railway just looking in just like y'all got a good life. At least I hope that's still a thing they do. 
I think so. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, he's talking. This is a more. This is a more recent video from him, so it's probably still open. A hot tub party. If you can't remember, then I think you found your problem. We don't need stimulus checks. We need more happy cabbies per capita. That's why there are entire websites dedicated to finding the closest cabbie bar in your area. So if I ever post a picture of me in a cabbie bar with no context, this. Oh. Chattanooga, Clifton. This is the context. Capybaras are such an uh, unlimited serotonin act that naturally people are going to ask if they're good pets. And my <laughs> answer is, yeah, they'd probably be good pets. Question is, would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably wouldn't. One is that they poop. A lot. Uh, they kind of have the panda problem, where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot bad, so to compensate, they eat a whole lot more of it. Which means they seem to drop deuces at will. You might not get to notice just how much, because Capybara also take part in coprophagia, which in NICE 2023 YouTube guidelines mm -hmm. terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it. And if you can handle watching this infinite food glitch in action, there's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place. Remember, we're talking about a gerbil that can weigh as much as you. But you're not just feeding one Cappy. Since they're social animals that don't do well alone, you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that because two's company but three's a party and well i mean not necessarily i mean because if they're good with other animals i mean who, what's to stop them from being social with the animals that you got we got here oh imagine asher with this with this thing asher would just like be in love He'd be like, dude hey hey friend friend and copy bars so i feel like it would be the thing where like asher is like and normally the cats would be like, what is he doing with Capybara? Probably just like. <laughs> and the cat, and like, I could just see it now. Asher just imagine late. it being like, Asher being like, hey, 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 what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? He's like, I'm ch uh, he's like, chill, bro. I'm, I'm, uh. Chester. His name would be. Uh, Chester the cat. Uh, we had cheesecake and cobbler. What's cheesecake, name, cobbler, biscuit. Oh, Rock, Rocky, like Rocky Road. I guess. Yeah, but I can just imagine like uh, you know Asher laying down in his bed up there and doing his whole. Oh, the capybara just comes down like. The capybara just like sits down next to him <laughs> and like puts his hand on his head and just like starts like starts petting Asher and Asher's just like, thanks, buddy, appreciate that. <laughs> And Cappy's just like, don't mention. Just chill, bro. Just chill. No self-respecting Cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. There's also the fact that since half their life involves water, you're going to have to have 24-hour access to anything a capybara can at least wade in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water. So <laughs> I saw that part. You might want to rethink that. But the best reason why you might want to hold off on adopting a walking coconut... It's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad and you realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming at you. In fact, in 2005, a capybara in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his pool by grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting oh, a biting, pooping, eating machine, you might be better off just having kids, because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina, because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Cappy clan seen the spawn en masse inside the Argentinian gated community. They quite literally <laughs> pulled up. The upside? Free lawn control. The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses while also becoming a danger to everyone on the road. There have also been reports of capybara running fades with pet dogs. Although to be fair, the dogs probably started it. But there is another right side if you want to look at it that way. The biggest threat to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn Aww. into leather. We're their biggest cop by far and if they decide to take back what's theirs, I'm they're going to. Mad at it. And the fact that they're doing it to a gated rich community, <clears throat> uh, there's a moral in there somewhere. But that's going to do it for this video. <laughs> for more consistent uploads, be sure to check out my TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. I try to post <laughs> daily on both. And if you'd like to support this channel, be honest. It's like, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, right there. Oh, jeez.
Also consider becoming a patron on Patreon. But like, only do it if you can afford it, because honestly, you watching a video this far is actually more than I can really ask for. Got a whole <laughs> lot of video ideas I want to get out for the new year, so as always, drink water, hug your mother, dap up your father if he's not into the whole hugging thing. Try to be a cappy in a world full of cappers. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. Hey. Eles vão parar. Ah, eu não tô acreditando nisso. <laughs> Capybara migration, ladies and gentlemen. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I love capybaras. I, I like... Damn, dude. I want a capybara now. Like he said, they're a wild animal. It's probably not a good idea to have one as a pet. True. I'd, I'd still like to go to like a petting zoo that has a capybara. Yeah. Yeah, go there. Just be like, hey, buddy. Hey. And like, give it some chin scratches. Hopefully it won't bite my finger off with its massive, like, massive dentures. I guess, yeah, we'll see. But, damn. Yeah, cap capybara. I kind of feel bad now because, like, it's like... Do you say Switzerland considers it abuse of a guinea pig lives by itself? I think it was one of the one of the countries in Europe. I forget. But yeah, it was like, I mean, I kind of feel bad because they say that, but at the same time, like, if if anyone met my guinea pig, I don't think they would have been at all like suspicious that it was unhappy. Well, I think it's because you spent enough time with it yourself. Probably. I think that's... So like I, it lived in the same room as me. My parents checked in on him all the time if I wasn't at home. And, like, uh, my girlfriend at the time also checked in on him a lot, too. So Yeah. And, I mean, he was always just seemed like he was full of energy and stoked about life. So, I don't know. Yeah. He didn't seem like he was mad that he didn't have a, another guinea pig to hang out with. Oh. Well, I mean, he seems like he did good. Like, you give me little yogurt drop treats. And you're pretty awesome for that. Yeah. And, like, he uh, he didn't want to ever be picked up. Like, he wasn't a fan of being picked up, but he would let you pet him, like, as All much the as time. you wanted to, you know? Yeah. If you ever picked him up, though, he'd start screaming and be like, put me down. He's like, I don't like being in the air. Gosh. So you just scoop him up and he'd be like, whoosh, like, right back out of your hands into the nope. cage. He's so like, he was really nope. hard to get out when I had to clean the cage. I had to get him in and... Just scoop him out real quick and get him into like a little ball so he could run around in it for a little bit. And yeah. It's always like, ah! <laughs> get him between the cage and the ball. Yeah. All right. So we're going to end it here, everybody. This was the science behind the unproblematic nature of the capybara. Hopefully y'all enjoyed and hopefully we'll see y'all in the next one. So until then, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Take care, everyone. Peace.